Good morning. How are you? Um, so uh, I'm Bob Linden, and I um, host a radio program that's called Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden. And it's been on now for 11 years, uh, broadcasting on real radio stations, uh, um, including uh, being the first uh, radio program that has been on a major network, which was Air America. And I've been on everything from liberal to right-wing uh, radio stations for some reason. I don't know how I've been allowed to continue this long with a, a message that uh, really is so different in the uh, meaty, uh, as I call it, so influenced by the meat industry and pharmaceutical industries that, uh, well, I'm, just to give you a little background on, on my form of uh, vegan animal liberation activism, which to me means uh, getting the information about veganism uh, to as many people as possible because the arguments are so compelling that you know, if you really get people thinking about things, um, they at some point will make a change. They may not do it right before your eyes at that moment. They, they might heckle you and mock you because you're asking them to reject everything they've been taught all their lives by their parents and in school and by their doctors and uh, TV commercials everywhere. But uh, we, we have a basic truth um, in, in kindness to animals and um, you know, we've, people in this country are always responding in polls that you know, we're, we're in the wrong direction, something is wrong, you know, but um, people can never seem to figure out what it is and really what it is is that uh, we consume animal and animal products and do things that just go against our basic nature to, to love animals and, and to not hurt others and, and to not kill, you know, I mean, those are the basic things that I thought I learned as a child and, you know, my, my morality was, you know, thou shalt not kill and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And the exact opposite happens on our plate, you know, I mean, it's really amazing. And I, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that I'm here talking as a vegan radio talk show host uh, or as a vegan or as, you know, at all. I mean, I grew up eating meat every day of my life. Or, and um, just uh, and now I'm vegan for 28 years, um, and uh, you know I was in college and cooking on my own and had my own apartment and you know just one night I I was preparing chicken. I normally had all my friends over on Friday night and I made this great chicken dish with apricot glaze and whatever. You know. And um, one night I was cooking and it. What I was cooking wasn't a round, nondescript food item. I saw more of the body, and I, I just realized there was, you know, there was a cadaver. This, this was somebody's body, and, um, and obviously uh, suffered great pain and, and was murdered to, to make it to my frying pan there. And uh, it was uh, you know, weird, weird to consider that. I, um, I looked down and I said, you know, because I thought, well, the animals know it's their purpose to, to be eaten, right? I mean, the chicken would gladly jump into the frying pan, right? I mean, that's how we, we've brainwashed ourselves, or the media have brainwashed us. And uh, I looked down that night and I said, I don't, I don't think I can eat animals anymore. And so I became the first vegetarian I ever knew in my life, I mean, you know, which seems bizarre to me, um, you know, even... I mean, we're a religious society, supposedly, and we have uh, people who swear by the Bible. And if they look right in page one, it actually says to be vegan. It seems to be ignoring that when they're having the church barbecues and all of that, which really seem to be weird. And um, you know, but it does say in Genesis uh, book one, verse twenty-nine, that you know, we're supposed to be vegan. Um, so, uh, so the masses seem to ignore that and. Uh, um, you know, go on with the, with the propaganda that starts at an early age with a clown, you know, with the playground and the toys and, you know, what could be wrong with that? Um, so I looked down that night at, the, at this body and, and said, I can't eat animals anymore. And, uh, I was engaged to a butcher's daughter at the time and, uh, you know, my future ex-mother-in-law was yelling at me, you know, you're going to die if you eat like that. Are you crazy? What's wrong with you, you know? <laughs> And uh, 
And it didn't matter to me. I thought, well, if it's detrimental to my health, I can't participate in this violence, so it doesn't matter. And then I find out in all my studies and all these years that I probably will die, but a lot you know, further in the future than had I continued on the uh, diet you know, that I was taught to have, even by my mother who loved me. My mother who loved me was feeding me the cadavers that would eventually, well, killed my father at the age of 47 of a, a heart attack. And, um, you know, so uh, it's uh, been kind of interesting that, uh, well, I had, and I had a career in broadcasting also, so I was playing music on radio stations around the country. And, um, then the uh, uh, industries seemed to consolidate and uh, my profession seemed to disappear out of broadcasting as a program director at radio stations. So the animal rights part of my life took over, and I was involved with producing a number of different uh, vegan festivals, uh, one called San Diego Fall Fest, and um, in Los Angeles, uh, World Fest, uh, which is a vegan festival that I um, organized in the year 2000. And when I was walking around, going around to different radio stations promoting uh, World Fest, a producer there at one of the stations said, well, you know, you have a background in broadcasting, and you're an animal rights activist. Shouldn't you be doing a you know, an animal rights radio show or something, you know. And in the back of my mind, I always thought, well, I thought maybe I'd do something on video at, at some point so I could, you know, hold up a container and say, you know, like, cow's milk, bad, you know, soy milk, good, you know, something like that. Um, but I, I didn't realize, oh, I could, I could perhaps translate this to radio also. And um, she said, okay, you have to pay for airtime, so go try to find some advertisers. And, you know, so within two weeks, I, I did have... Uh, the advertising money together to go on a conservative station in Los Angeles, um, KRLA, and uh, I, I figured basically I'd have two weeks on the air, ownership, management would, would hear the show and they'd kick me off immediately because I'm offending all the other advertisers on the station, you know, every, every, you know it's like the, the media are controlled by meat and pharmaceuticals, so you have a uh, McDevil's commercial followed by, you know, When Dies and Kills Jr. and uh, Murder King and Skin and Snout, you know, that's what a hamburger is all about and Up Chuck E. Cheese. So, you know, they seem to own the airwaves. So apparently the owners of the radio stations have not heard my show yet, so they let it continue 11 years into it. I'm on a station in San Francisco now uh, and one in Southern California. It's uh, self-syndication, so I'm still every day, you know, begging people for donations, trying to get sponsors and advertisers so I can pay the radio stations um, to have a, a message of uh, vegan animal liberation uh, in the media. And um, so to me, this is the most important activism uh, as an animal rights activist. I, I believe it's really um, the number one priority of vegans should be to promote veganism. Uh, if we don't do it, who will? And yet, I see a reluctance uh, happening lately uh, where people are being influenced to say it's, it's good enough if you know, a small baby male cow gets a, a, a bigger box, you know, then, then we have humane veal. And you couldn't give veal away a few years ago, and now it's on the top of the menu at Wolfgang Puck's restaurant. And, you know, what, what are we accomplishing? Um, I, I was not a supporter of Prop 2. Um, I, I, just, I just feel like we have the most compelling argument and, and we shouldn't compromise it with any sort of endorsement for humane meat or, uh, or any animal products at all. Um, I also ask that people uh, who, are, who, who consider themselves vegetarian uh, to maybe make the decision, you know, if, they're cons if you're still consuming animal products, to make the decision now to eliminate all animal products. Um, because um, for all the reasons that you became a vegetarian, those are the exact reasons that we're supposed to become vegan. Uh, I was ignorant. You know, when I looked down at that chicken body, I said, okay, I can't participate in this violence anymore. But... Um, I don't think anybody gets hurt if I drink a glass of milk or I eat eggs, right? So I continued to do, do that for a while until somebody revealed that truth to me. And I wish I knew all of this at a much younger age. I mean, I won a hamburger eating contest at age 16. I'm lucky to be here today. I ate 30 White, White Castle hamburgers at one time. Um, so, you know, I feel lucky to have uh, 
survive this, you know. So, um, and now in, um, in doing the, the vegan radio program, we have enough information to compel people uh, for, for all sorts of reasons. And so, you know, I look at, you know, well, what can we do? Okay, I was, I had my career in broadcasting, so I'm able to do uh, a vegan radio program. Um, but uh, I, I, I would like to see, you know, this movement of reluctant vegans because I don't know why we're always, you know, vegans are very polite, nice people. I guess we don't want to impose on others, you know, to, at times to bring up the subject of, of going vegan, you know. But um, who, who are we to uh, keep this important information from people that will save their children, you know. I mean, they're, they're not going to know about it un unless we uh, bring it to their attention. And, uh, you know, so, so the ideas of, of having, you know, organic meat, you know, it's such a scam. All these things with animal products, it's such scams. There was this farm that was just, you know, supplying organic meat, organic eggs to, to all of these farmers' markets around Southern California. It turned out the people were just buying regular eggs, regular meat, and repackaging it, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's a total scam. Um, for, for the vegans who, or, or for people who, you know, are, are, are saying, well, have, have grass-fed beef, you know, whatever, all that, that nonsense. Uh, environmentally, I mean, a movement to end factory farms is irrelevant if we're not ending meat-eating, if we're not ending dairy consumption, if we're not planting that idea. Um, I was at the recent so-called Animal Rights Conference uh, on the East Coast, and I want to know, you know, I, 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 I want the animals to be included in this equation, you know? I, I mean, uh, where is the movement to abolish meat? It sounds crazy. Oh, what, what, you know, why, why don't we have a, a campaign to abolish meat here? Why was there no campaign to abolish meat at the recent animal rights conference, you know, when there was a campaign to endorse so-called enriched cages uh, for... Um, for chickens, which is, is total torture, which is concentration camp conditions for chickens. I don't, uh, something recently has happened that's very disturbing in the animal rights movement, uh, or so-called animal rights movement, where we have the uh, Humane Society of the United States, which I consi consider to be uh, basically um, you know, a subsidiary of the meat industry, uh, influencing the thinking of, of animal rights right now. So we have the egg industry, United Egg producers uh, convinced, for some reason, HSUS to endorse these so-called enriched cages, which are battery cages, horrible conditions. Why would HSUS endorse these cages? HSUS on its website said these cages are unacceptably cruel. Uh, the, the physical and psychological problems uh, developed by chickens are unacceptable. Farm Sanctuary had the same thing on its website. It said these cages are unacceptable, never accept them until United Egg Producers influences HSUS. The president of United Egg Producers says he sent the CEO of HSUS, Wayne Pistoli, to Europe to look at these cages. Wayne came back and, surprise, he liked the cages. He endorsed them. And, uh, and then uh, uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne's people, according to the president of United Egg Producers, got on the phone with all the other major animal rights activist organizations and told them, leave the egg industry alone, support this bill. So now we have animal rights activists who are supporting an industry, the greatest massacre of animals. This is the most, I mean, by the billions, we have animal activists who are saying, it's okay, we'll ignore that every male chick is ground alive, you know, day one or suffocated. Every female is mutilated, has a face cut off. And they're all crammed in cages indoors, um, you know, they'll never see sunlight. They, I mean, they'll never feel the earth. And uh, because now they're given a stick called a perch and, you know, some sand, and it's called, you know, a, you know, a nesting box or something. It's, it, I mean, it's, it's really insane. And now we have animal activists going around saying, well, now hens can engage in natural behaviors. That's not the message of, of animal rights activism. The message is don't eat chickens, you know? I mean, like, I, I, I don't understand... Uh, where, where we're going on this. Um, and and the, the organizations who were influenced, you know, HSUS influenced Farm Sanctuary, Mercy for Animals, Compassion Over Killing, um, In Defense of Animals, um, the uh, 
ASPCA. The ASPCA just uh, sent $150,000 to a turkey farmer in, uh, in Kansas to, uh, to build a bigger barn so he can produce 600,000 more eggs every year. That's your donation to the ASPCA, facilitated by Bruce Friedrich of Farm Sanctuary. So um, right now, I'm, I'm very disturbed at the, you know, the, the direction we're going. People think chickens have it good, the animals have it good, everything's humane. And we're getting nowhere except uh, you know, a downward spiral to, to the world, basically ending because of climate change. Uh, and the only way to reverse it is through veganism. Um, you know, I've come as a vegan for 28 years. I, I see all the problems of the world are related to consumption of meat and dairy. And we can't give a message that it's okay to eat any kind of meat. And, you know, uh, I, I, I just don't see, you know, I'm upset, you know. I mean, HSUS gets $120 million a year in donations going toward not promoting veganism. HSUS collected 700,000 signatures um, to, for Prop 2 in Southern California. It was the Prevention of Farm Animal Cruelty Act, and every signature gatherer was told, don't mention anything about veganism to people when you collect a signature. That's 700,000 opportunities to really tell people how you prevent farm animal cruelty or the cruelty to animals on farms. Um, and, you know, Wayne Pacelli on the Discovery Channel goes on. And the question is, would being vegan help animals? And he says, there's no need for people to go vegetarian. You know, it's, it's too, uh, too paralyzing a regimen. Just know where your meat comes from. Just, you know, buy humane meat. And this influences the thinking of animal rights activists now to just say, it's all right, I buy my meat at Whole Foods. You know, I go to Whole Foods with their great five-step animal welfare program, you know, and I go in there and I see the sign, you know, five-step animal welfare. But I say to the guy behind the counter, like, uh, these animals don't look like they're doing too well right here, you know? They're all dead in front of us, you know? So, um, so uh, basically, I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of people who should be vegan who are now saying, you know, I buy the proper meat, you know, or people who used to be vegan who aren't anymore, who go back to the proper murder, to the proper killing. And there is no proper murder, no proper killing. It's all propaganda. We're, we're all deluding ourselves to think, you know, there's any humane meat or any humane animal products. So uh, I would really like to disengage from the thinking of HSUS and its horrible influence. HSUS has a pig farmer on its staff who kills a thousand pigs a week. He's the director of rural outreach and development. I wonder why they didn't send him here to talk at this conference instead of Dr. Michael Greger. Um, but HSUS needs to get its money from every direction possible, I suppose. It is whatever you want HSUS to be, it will be, as long as it makes money off of the deal. It partners with Wolfgang Puck, serial killer of animals. Um, you know, it, it uh, <laughs> promotes Michael Vick. You know, it, it, it said, all of Michael Vick's dogs should be killed. They can't be rehabilitated. And then it takes $50,000 from the Philadelphia Eagles to rehabilitate Michael Vick's image. So um, that's not really, I'm not in any movement that HSUS or those groups are. I'm in the movement to present the vegan choice to people. And they're really confusing things right now, and it's really upsetting to me to think that any animal products are okay. And they're not. No, no animal products, no organic products. You know, a campaign against factory farming, what does that mean? You know? So, no factory farms, but we're still going to have 300 million people eating meat? So, grass-fed is better? Where's the land to grass-feed all of these animals? There's, there's not enough land, you know? And when they're out there, there's more soil erosion. And, um, and then the effect on the environment is 400% um, more methane released from grass-fed animals than factory-farmed animals. So why is HSUS, why are they making me an advocate for factory farms? I don't want to be an advocate for factory farms. You know, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, yet, um, environmentally speaking, factory farms would be better than grass-fed. Uh, what a scam animal, animal products are. So... Um, if you can't do your own vegan radio show, um, you can help mine. You know, I need to raise money. I need, you want to do advertising sales for me? Great. 
You want to do direct action animal activism? Help me figure out how to hang my sign here if it keeps falling off the wall uh, at this event. Um, and, and, you know, and, and there is a campaign in France you know, for the abolition of meat. And why aren't vegans out on the street collecting signatures for a proposition to abolish meat? Now, oh, people will laugh at us and say, how ridiculous, right? I mean, oh, we can, you know, but, um, but it brings up the subject and it brings up a reason to have a conversation about being vegan. Um, but we have banned plastic bags, you can't, you know, in grocery stores. San Francisco, we ban plastic bags. So we, we can ban something even more dangerous than plastic bags, and that, that would be meat and dairy, which are the most destructive, you know, the, the production and consumption of meat and dairy are the most destructive of all human behaviors. Um, and, what, you know, I think it's condescending um, to deprive people of the information uh, about going vegan, to think they can't understand, they can't get it. Uh, all of us, have gotten it somehow, some way, and it's the most important thing we can share. You know, I had a guy contact me in my radio show, and he, he listened to it on the radio station here in San Francisco, and he said, you know something, your show is dripping with moral superiority, and I'm, I'm never going to listen to it again, you know. And um, the thing is, it is, you know, I mean, like, maybe people resent vegans for their moral superiority, but, you know, and they take... <laughs> I, I responded to him and I said, well, look, it is morally superior not to hurt someone. It is morally superior not to kill someone. It is morally superior to share resources, feed the hungry, you know? I mean, so, I mean, if you're bothered by that and you want to shut off the station, you know, I mean, it's really forcing you to examine your situation, you know? And, like, if you recognize it as morally superior, then join the morally superior, you know? I mean, like, do the right thing. You know, if you have this inner conflict within you, well, it's understandable. I mean, the, the conflict is certainly understandable. So, I mean, I would just love to see, and I'll work on it, you know, I'm just... And also, you're like... Um, this. My life is like a reality um, vegan animal, animal liberation TV show, basically, like... And it's going on even right this second because I'm, I'm going to record. I'm going to do my show live here at 1 p.m. Uh, today um, from my booth, which may have a sign hanging over it if I figure out how to how to hang it. Um, and uh, I mean, really, this is this is you know my, my animal activism. Uh, uh, this week, the the warplanes have been flying overhead. You know, the uh, Hell's Angels up in the sky, or the, uh, the the Blue Angels. You know, I mean, it's just. So disturbing, really, that, you know, th those sounds, it's just so ominous, and it's just, you know, so, so deadly. I, I, don't, I don't see how anybody can, can appreciate that as entertainment, like we're supposed to go, all right, you hear that? You know, I mean, it's, a, it's much more somber than, than what this is about, is any sort of celebration. And, and um, you know, war itself is, is caused by you know, conflict over, over resources, you know, like, Oil, water, land, and um, so actually, the, you know, the key to everything is is, is going vegan. Um, I'm I'm having a, a dinner with uh, Cindy Sheehan on Wednesday night. Oh, you know, and, and the other thing that's so incongruous when I think about how somber it is, the warplanes overhead that we're hearing, how threatening they sound, and uh, and I wonder if that's a message to the corporate message to to a liberal area like San Francisco, like. Oh, you really think you can pra pass uh, Proposition 37, huh? You know, when Monsanto controls the company, uh, the country, the co you know, and flies those warplanes. So that, that could be the message there. Um, but, you know, we fight wars over resources, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's meat and dairy that, that cause that demand, you know. So I'm having a dinner with Cindy Sheehan Wednesday night at Vegetarian House. Uh, in San Jose, Cindy Sheehan will be at attending. Uh, it's the Go Vegan for Peace feast. Uh, you know, there are reasons why Tolstoy said, uh, as long as there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. And uh, 
Um, you know, that's uh, a big part of it. Cindy Sheehan is vegan. Uh, she went vegan uh, listening to my radio show. Uh, she, I'm proud to say I said something that grossed her out so much that she, I don't know what, you know, what it was, but that was, uh, that was that. So, um, and then uh, Monday night, I'm doing a dinner at Loving Hut for um, Dixie May, who is the president of the San Francisco Vegetarian Society, uh, who has dedicated her life um, to promoting veganism also. She's 78 years old, and you know, when she was five years old, her father took her fishing, and she had sympathy for the fish you know, who were caught, caught. And so um, that led her on her path. You know, I mean, this, we're all here today you know, for, for her efforts, and, and uh, it all comes from you know, her feeling for, you know, started with that one fish. For, for me, it's the, the one chicken I was cooking in college, looking down and seeing the body of a murder victim, you know. So, um, so I'm doing this dinner Monday night just to uh, to honor uh, Dixie, you know, an appreciation dinner. If you'd like to attend, that's at Loving Hut, and I have flyers here and and um, and in the uh, auditorium at my booth. So, um, but vegan animal liberation activism. What can we do? Okay, so we can start this campaign to abolish meat. We can be on street corners with clipboards. Hey, would you sign the campaign to abolish meat? Oh, why would I do something like that? Well, you know, I mean, you, you know your kids are going to wind up getting cancer, heart disease, diabetes, right? I mean, you, you know, it's, it's time. Why should I sign that? Well, do you know the health care costs, the, you know, just to San Francisco alone, the, the cost of what? meat and dairy would be, you know, I mean, um, you know, the, environmentally, you know, I mean, there's a drought in this country right now. Water is such a precious resource. Um, so I, as a vegan, need 10,000 gallons of water uh, to grow my food in a year. Um, would you like to sign this for, you know, like for saving water purposes? And, you know, I mean, do, do you know what a meat eater requires to grow his or her food in a year? Anybody know? Okay, so um, I quote I the, wrong. well, I, I, I don't know, I mean, that could be right, but I'm stuck on one mathematical equation from the Stockholm Water Institute, which says a vegan requires 10,000 gallons of water to grow his or her food in a year, and a meat eater requires 320,000 gallons. So that means I save 300,000, 310,000 gallons of water over a meat eater, or 32 of us, 32 vegans can be fed to one meat eater, you know. The estimates now are, are from that same Water Institute that a, 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 a pound of beef requires 8,500 gallons of water. 8,500 for a pound of beef. Well, that's, you know, that gallon of arrowhead water that you have in the house, you know, pour that down the drain, you know, like every day for 22 years, you know. So why should we sign the campaign to abolish meat? You know, at least get people thinking about it. You know? It would be great if we, we you know, had the resolution and actually did it, or maybe some progressive place. Maybe Berkeley will be ready for it. You know, if we re but you know, all of this information isn't there. People don't know that meat and dairy uh, are responsible for 51% of all greenhouse gas emissions. 51%. And that's from uh, the World Watch Institute. The UN... Uh, underestimated it at 18%. And the, the people at the World Watch Institute are very upset with the animal rights organizations who continue to quote the 18%. Now, 18% still represents, and this is the you know, production of meat and dairy, and greenhouse gas emissions, 18% still represents more than all transportation combined, all cars, boats, trucks, planes. Yeah. But 51% represents more than all other human activity combined. Uh, and methane from cows is uh, what's uh, most critical in, in global warming. And we don't have time. You know, we don't have time to, to mess around and you know, uh, not get the vegan message out you know, if we want to have a drop of water left or you know, any land to grow food. I mean, you know, there'll be environmental refugees, which you know, lead to hostilities also. So what do we do? A campaign to abolish meat? Um, I uh, believe that we should do a campaign for doorknob, doorknob hangers, you know, go around to neighborhoods 
you know, and, uh, hey, mom, dad, did you know your kids don't have to have diabetes and cancer in their future? Da, 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 and, and just, you know, I mean, let's reach out to the people, you know, and uh, uh, my, the megaphone is still legal in the U.S. Uh, by the way, I have a court case against the city of Anaheim uh, for my unconstitutional uh, protest uh, arrest. Uh, against the circus, we're, we're allowed to use megaphones and we should be on the street uh, in front of McDonald's uh, pointing out that Ronald McDonald is America's number one terrorist who will kill uh, the people's children there long before Al-Qaeda ever will, you know, I mean, it's, you know, um, you know campaigns to, to, to parents to, to understand what they're feeding their children, you know, we, we need to do things like that. I mean, I, so I'm a one person, um, Nonprofit uh, operation, you know, so I'm just doing what I can. But I mean, if I had some real help, you know, I mean, in terms of sponsorship sales, getting grants, whatever, I mean, there's all sorts of things that need to be done that could be done uh, if all the money weren't being siphoned off to uh, HSUS and other organizations who now do not promote uh, veganism, uh, you know. And there's really so much that does need to be done. So I don't know if, if we have the multi-billionaire sitting in the audience here today among us, or maybe when this video goes out on YouTube or whatever. But there are, there are so many things that need to be done. Um, just give me one second. Um, for example, I did a show here in San Francisco. I produced a show called Soul Food for Thought. So this, this was outreach uh, to people of color with a vegan message. And we had a doctor from Ethiopia. We had Dr. Milton Mills uh, talking about the comparison of uh, you know, what, the, uh, what the traditional diet of Africa was to what African Americans are eating now and the health crisis in the African American community. The health crisis in the African American community is causing an environmental crisis in Africa right now. So, I mean, what's happening here is causing water shortages, the snow caps melting, all of the, you know, the, the water that's provided to people there, it's all connected, you know? And I had Dr. Antenna Roba from Ethiopia who visited uh, the uh, slave quarters in, um, uh, in Ghana who compared them to slaughterhouses here. I mean, it, they, it was an obvious comparison to him. And Dr. Milton Mills, who was saying, you know, what, what African Americans are eating right now is plantation food, it's slave food. It, you know, I mean, there has to be this outreach to people of color, to Spanish-speaking people. Cesar Chavez was a vegan, the, the great hero to people. Cesar Chavez was a vegan animal rights activist. And is she vegan? Yes, yeah, she came out as vegan. Okay, great, great, great. So uh, there's a Cesar Chavez holiday. There's Cesar Chavez Day in San Francisco and Los Angeles. I spoke at the Cesar Chavez Day in San Francisco, and I said, well, if Cesar Chavez were here today, there wouldn't be anything for him to eat. He wouldn't be able to eat here today. You know what I mean? It's like uh, Arturo Rodriguez, who was the president of United Farm Workers, said Cesar Chavez took as much pleasure in converting people to uh, veganism or vegetarianism as he did to trade unionism. So why should that important aspect of his life be ignored, uh, you know, and, and not, I mean, he, and, and also Cesar Chavez said, if you're doing all of this for compassionate purposes, you, you first give up dairy and eggs because they're, they're the most cruel. So, um, but, you know, in, and using Cesar Chavez, I mean, I think he would want uh, to still promote veganism now. So let's have outreach to Spanish-speaking people and go to those Cesar Chavez days. I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's just so much that, that can be done, and we have to do our outreach. And I know it sometimes feels better to have, like, an easier victory, like, oh, look, they banned foie gras. Great, okay. But then what happens is... These restaurants, the, the, I mean, the, the meat people, you know, they, they're going to make their profit and they're going to figure out ways of getting around things. So we, now we have this foie gras ban, you know, that's happening here. And suddenly, oh, foie gras is free if you buy a, a $20 cracker, you know? I mean, you know, the, or, oh, we're on federal property. The state law doesn't apply. We'll have foie gras. Or, you know, I mean, and, and it's great to fight for these things, but... 
I don't know how, how often they last. It seems like this legislative you know, thing, people get around them. They, you know, it's like, oh, Prop 2. Okay, so now hens are supposed to go, and, and Prop 2 will never happen now because of this other legislation. It's all such a mess. But So with Prop 2, hens were supposed to have from, go from 8.5 inches by 11 inches of space to 12 inches by 12 inches of space. Which, if you really, you know, I mean, if you do the arts and crafts thing, it's probably, you know, like, oh, look, extra, you know, this much, which is meaningless. Um, and then the public feels like, oh, chickens have it okay, I'll, I'll just keep eating chickens. And, and yet, is California going to hire an army of uh, chicken welfare inspectors to go in and measure? You know, are they going to take, you know, a ruler and say, oh, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's only, uh, you know, 11 inches by 12, you know. The chicken inspectors don't even go, they can't go into the plants. The ammonia just, you know, I mean, these are such toxic conditions that, you know, so we're expecting so much. It's like, oh, now we have a law for this, and, and the nice animal killers will, will now, you know, go along with everything, you know. Not really, you know. I mean, they'll always find a way around it. So what can we do to, to reach as many people with a vegan message as possible? And we have the most family-friendly message, you know, I mean, you want to keep mom and dad around longer, right? You don't want them to die prematurely, you know? It's like, you got to look into going vegan then, you know? It's like, your kids, you know, obesity, diabetes, you know, all, you know, you don't want them on that path. There's another way. It just happens to be, you know, you've never heard of it, heard this way before because, well, you know, it's not profitable to the meat and pharmaceutical industries to, uh, you know, and so much ex animal exploitation happens because of this, you know? I mean, just the, the 10 billion land animals who are killed in this country every year, uh, the loss of habitat. Um, this is National Primate Protection Week, uh, Primate Liberation Week. Uh, all the animals are in the labs, uh, you know, all the experiments are going on looking for the cure to eating meat and dairy. You know, it's like, it's, it's, you know. So I'm living in such a crazy world. <laughs> it just seems so bizarre. Yeah, okay. Thanks. around the country uh, write letters to uh, uh, like FOIA requests on information on particular primates who are housed in uh, certain uh, particular federally funded laboratories around the country. Mm. Do you know what we're going to remember that? Um, the primate freedom tour? From, yeah, I do re recall some of that. Yeah, yeah. And now there's the, um, there's the uh, Primate Protection Act, I think, that's uh, being considered under Congress that's, that's advancing now. Or, but I mean, did that primate freedom tour just go by the wayside, just uh, went extinct? It's not really active anymore? And not to my knowledge. I mean, I would recommend going to uh, stop animal exploitation now for, for related to, to primate issues and laboratories where... Can we get your t-shirt one? Uh, I got this from a... Uh, there's a, a store on Venice Beach called Indigenous that has the best animal t-shirts ever. I mean, it's just go incredible, yeah. So... Um, so, uh, all right, I guess that's it. I have so, you can hear my vegan radio program. I, what time is it anyway? Am I late or early? I, mean, I have no idea. What. It's what? 15 minutes? Okay. So, um, you can hear my vegan radio program, Go Vegan Radio with Bob Linden, um, on... Um, it's on KEST in San Francisco, AM 1450. But if you could just go to goveganradio.com, there are about 400 programs that are archived there. Um, also, I'm on iTunes and uh, stitcher.com slash govegan, and then you can listen on your iPhone or Android. Um, and when you regis register at stitcher.com slash govegan, um, you get a chance at winning $100, and if you listen to a complete show, Go Vegan Radio gets a dollar, which is good because I have to pay for airtime every week. That's really um, been uh, the challenge for me over the last 11 years, the miracle of keeping the show on the air because, I mean, I'm 
you know, I'm not asking McDonald's for any money, uh, obviously, and uh, nor would I take it, um, <laughs> which is uh, different from some of the other animal organizations, I think. Uh, and um, so any questions, comments, uh, protests against my actions? <laughs> Yes. So you're not technically true because he's fish at least once a week, that sort of thing. It's not really vegetarian, but he's predominantly mostly vegan, but not really vegetarian because he's fed off the farm. Now, I, 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 too, but when did you hear, when, when was the latest you heard about the, the fish? A few weeks ago, maybe it was a few months ago. Okay. Yeah, because I was watching, you know, all of his interviews on CNN and all, and, and at one point he said, well, I, you know, I, I might take a bite of turkey on Thanksgiving. Uh, and Oh, I, I hope not anymore. Um, and then when Clinton was asked if he's vegan, he said, well, yeah, I am. I like all the foods. I like the beans and all that. So it's somewhat questionable. I mean, he's, I, I hope he's, pre you know. Hope he's, there's no ethical uh, motivation behind it. Uh, it's saving his life. It was saving, he, he, he was, his heart was. Right. But you know, I find that people who, who do it for health reasons come around to animal reasons eventually too, you know, I mean, it seems to happen. Whatever the reason, you know, environmental or, or health or, you know, it comes around to... But he's as selfish as the media is, actually. What's that? He's as selfish as the media is, isn't he? Eating fish selfish. is... Selfish. 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 Just dropping meat because of health reasons. Right, for, for health. Selfish. Right, just right. Just mm -hmm. and, and he went to, I mean, he went to Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, who, who, who's been a guest on my show. Oh, and, and just, um, so I'm on this radio station in Southern California. Well, first I was a guest on my friend's radio show in Southern California, uh, this radio station. And I, uh, I, I, I debated a cattleman on the show. So, it, yeah, so we had a nice debate going on. Uh, the hotline rings, and it's the owner of the radio station. And he wants to get in on the conversation. And he has this big Texas drawl, and I figure he's going to say, get that vegan off my radio show right now. <laughs> and, and he said, you know something? And what, what, what you were talking about here today kind of reminded me you know, of, of how the 4-H indoctrinates kids and how when he was a child, he raised this steer and then the steer was taken away from him going onto a truck and the steer looked around, looked back at him and, you know, and, and his heart broke when, when the steer looked back at him being taken away. And, and he never forgot that. I mean, that had such an impact on him and yet he still was in the cattle industry and all. And he didn't remember that uh, until this debate was going on uh, with the cattlemen. So on comes this Texas drawl, you know, from a Texas cattleman, uh, who's reconnecting with his love for animals, and that was nice. And then he, he liked my show, you know, what I did there, and he said, oh, I should carry your show on, on my station. So we talked about doing that. And then, you know, one day I called him, I said, well, how are you doing? He said, well, not really so well. I mean, I, 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 I need heart surgery, but the heart surgeons say the outcome will really be poor. I, I weigh 327 pounds, and everything's blocked. I don't know what to do, I'm, you know. So I said, well, maybe you're just desperate enough to where I, here I am to save your life and you'll do something I suggest to you. I said, you're going to go vegan right now. You're not going to go vegan my way. You're going to go vegan the Esselstyn way. I, I'm going to put you in touch with him. You know, da, 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 da. This was like six months ago, 327 pounds. He's now down to 255. His cholesterol went from 300 something to 160 something. He's now walking farther than he's walked in his adult life. And uh, because he was finally desperate enough to listen to, to the only thing that could have saved him. I wish they would put up at the heart clinic like, you know, sorry, you know, your condition is too serious, go vegan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. So, uh, hey, yes. Yeah, not to change the subject too much, but going back to the issue of fundraising, uh, because you're you saying you're a one man nonprofit, so to speak. Uh, obviously, uh, progressive, so called left wing uh, movements and groups don't typically have uh, the same amount as like, conservative or uh, right wing types of groups, but 
So there are a number of uh, celebrities who have been committed vegans for many years, if not decades, uh, who you can really count on for ethical environmental reasons. And some of the newer ones, like James Cameron, who uh, said he became a vegan for environmental and also ethical reasons because he cares about the animals. But people like Woody Harrelson and Alicia Silverstone have been uh, vegan for a number of years, very committed uh, for all the right reasons, and also uh, um, uh, Natalie Portman became a vegan recently after reading Jonathan Safran Foer's book, Eating Animals. So and, and she wore vegan ballet slippers in the movie, too. So. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> just a general point, you should talk to uh, Gavin Gorey, you probably have, you should be in touch with them to try to solve fundraising, just like, uh, you know, like the Democratic Party always has Mm -hmm. People like Barbara Streisand, people who have lots of money in Hollywood, so you should talk to them about fundraising and get a whole mass movement of okay. uh, hardcore left wing uh, committed vegans together to uh, support the radio show. Okay. Healthy. That's. Uh, you know, sort of vegan George Soros sort of thing. Yeah, that would be great. I'm, I'm all for it, really, you know. So, uh, Any other comments, questions? Um, for anybody. That's it. Well, that was my thinking exactly at the time. It's like they, they have so many people, you know, to, to get through, I guess. Has anyone here been successful in campaigning, fund, fund, finding fundraising? You have to go finding through eight. Them, them, having, them finding you? You kind of have to go through agents and, you know, their representatives and, and all of that stuff. So, And I can't believe, you know, I mean, I, I interviewed Bob Barker and I had him on the phone and I guess I was too shy at the time to say, like, hey, Bob, you know? Like, hey, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so feel free to, uh, you know, here's information on the show. Uh, the world is going vegan, by the way, so if we could push it a little, you know, faster. Uh, we're up to 7.5 million vegans in this country, and the number has doubled in the last two years, uh, in spite of being of vegans being shy about bringing up the issue of being vegan. So maybe if we were a little more boisterous, we can get the math working in our favor. Uh, here's the little card that with my website and stuff on it. And on the back of it, Viva La Vegan, the world's largest vegan grocery store, which is in Southern California. Uh, 6,000 vegan items. It's such, like, that's a thrill. I hope it's starting a major trend um, to be able to go into a grocery store and not hold your nose or have to take out the magnifying glass and look at ingredients is really, you know, kind of a nice thing. Um, the Cindy, information on the Cindy Sheehan dinner Wednesday, Dixie Mae dinner Monday. Um, I have little sign-up pads in the auditorium uh, for those. And uh, I thank you for coming. Did I offend anybody? Uh... <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank <laughs> you.